Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. Today I thought I would do a quick Victober check-in and let you know how Victober is going for me so far. So my plan is to do one of these little check-in videos every week of October. I'm going to film them on the Thursday and then upload them on the Friday is my plan. We'll see whether I manage to do that every week, but that is what I'm hoping to do. Um, I'm not able to vlog this year, so I thought I would do weekly updates, check-in videos instead of vlogging, um, and just let you know what I've been reading in the last week for October and how it's been going. So today is the 8th of October and I have finished four books in October so far, which I feel like is quite a lot for eight days, but um, two of them, in fact, three of them were pretty short um, and the other one was an audiobook so there we go. I I'd like to read like short tiny things at the beginning of October so I feel productive and then it encourages me for the rest of the month. I feel like that's definitely a good way of doing read films. So I'll talk about what I've been reading in the last week. Um, the first thing I read was Mugby Junction by Charles Dickens which is a like collab project basically <laughs> between Dickens and some other writers so he wrote some of the stories and some of the other stories are written by other people and they're all like connected by trains which was quite fun so I really enjoyed this um yeah it was really good fun it was really nice to read some Dickens short stories that I haven't read before which reminded me that Dickens has a lot of short stories that I haven't read before and though I've read all his novels I do have more new things to discover by him so I should read more of his short stories in general uh, but this was really good fun and yeah really enjoyable. And then another very short Victorian read was this. This is Green Fern Farm by Richard Jeffries. This was very short and I feel like it was too short for the story it was trying to tell or at least maybe I just mean that it didn't have that much to it. Like this I feel like is a quintessential three star read where I enjoyed it. It was really fun but I will probably forget it fairly soon. This is a kind of quiet country village story about um various people living in a village in the rural victorian britain there's you know a love triangle and you know, that's you know that's kind of all that happens it was quite enjoyable it was quite fun but um yeah then i also read uh this which is the children of the new forest by captain marriott um which is really interesting i feel like i found it interesting more than i enjoyed it if you see what i mean um like it was really fun and enjoyable in some ways and I really like the writing style but I also feel like it was quite interesting as a historical source. It's really interesting because this is both a Victorian novel which was partly aimed at children and also a Victorian historical fiction novel so it's really interesting to look at how this book explores the English Civil War and what the Victorians thought about the English Civil War um, but it's also really interesting to look at what the Victorians thought made good children's literature or what like Captain Marriott is trying to teach children in this book. So it's basically it's set during the English Civil War and it tells the story of these four children who are um, the children of a royalist captain and after their father dies in battle um, they are like in danger of um, getting attacked by the roundheads who are the other side of the war if you don't know anything about the English Civil War which if you're not British you probably don't. So the four children um, because they are now a risk of their lives for the roundheads they like run and hide in the forest so it was a really interesting read um i think there are a few things that make it a weird one as a modern reader um, and maybe one why i think it might not be the best book to give to children now though i think it's very interesting to look at um from a historical perspective um is that the like gender roles of the boys and the girls in the forest are really very very divided um and also um because they're living in this forest and they're trying to like build a life for themselves and live off what they have without meeting people because they're in hiding there's a lot of killing animals um and some of it is quite like graphic animal cruelty um, and then also they find in the forest and adopt a boy who is a gypsy and the descriptions of him are not not good they talk about taming him a lot and it's yeah that's that's quite bad so i wouldn't like give it to a child now necessarily unless they were old enough to understand the context of those things and think about them complicatedly um but it was a really interesting read um yeah and i found it interesting as well because i know like a bit about the english civil war but it was really interesting to see how certain victorians thought of it and also because captain marriott is like very clearly heavily royalist um so that was quite interesting to see that perspective as well um yeah it was very interesting so i'm glad i read it but um i don't think i loved it but it was interesting if you know what i mean 
Mm. Anyway, this is what I mean about why I love Victorian literature, because I'm so interested in the history that even if a book I'm like, oh, it's a bit, you know, maybe I don't love it, I can still find it fascinating. And then the other thing that I've read in the last um, eight days is Wuthering Heights, which I listened to on audiobook. It was a 14 hour audiobook, I don't quite know how I managed to fit it in eight days, but I did, I did listen to it at 1.25 speed, so maybe that was why. But it was so good. I love Wuthering Heights. I think this is, like, I've read Rolling Heights more than 10 times. Um, I think, along with Pride and Prejudice, it's my most to reread book. And I just, I just love it so much. And it's so good. And I've never listened to an audiobook before, so that was really lovely. That has been a really lovely, wonderful experience. My audiobook was narrated by Patricia Routledge, who did a just wonderful job. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was also really nice, because Wuthering Heights is one of those books that I know so well, that I've read so many times, and I just, like, know half the book off by heart. Like, <laughs> listening to it, I was just like, I know what line's coming next. I could just, like, almost speak along with it in my head, which was really lovely. I love it so much. I totally get why people hate Wuthering Heights because everyone in it is just like awful. Like it's just full of the most horrible, horrible people. But I love it so much. I just think the language is amazing and the writing is fantastic and the characters, though I kind of hate them all, are all fascinating. One thing I was thinking about is because my Victoria challenge this year was to um, read a Victorian novel that equates to your favourite modern genre um, and both Wuthering Heights and Children of the New Forest and Shirley in fact as well which I'll talk about in a minute I've been reading as historical fiction novels so I was trying to think about Wuthering Heights as a work of historical fiction you know it's set sort of between the 1770s to 1802 which is like 50 to 70 years before it was published um, and I think it's really interesting to look at Wuthering Heights as a historical novel in terms of like all the violence and kind of uncontrolled, untamed behaviour of all of these characters. I feel like, yes, it's to do with them being in this isolated place and them being like these complicated, messy people, um, but it's also to do with it being like in the past, um, this sort of like looking back on, you know, 70 years ago and thinking, oh, everyone was a mess then, we're so much more civilised now. Especially because like all the worst stuff that happens happens in the 18th century and then like the things that happen in the very beginning of the 19th century in like the 1801 and 1802 bits are like the resolution and things being solved and sorted out like a new dawn of a new era in the 19th century so interesting so i was thinking about that i was thinking about many other things as well i was thinking about narrative unreliability i was also thinking about wuthering heights as a supernatural and not a supernatural novel and the way like wuthering heights is full of supernatural language but everything that happens that is supernatural could be explained realistically so it's kind of got this like supernatural atmosphere but also is it supernatural is it not i just love it so much guys it's so good oh i love Wuthering heights one of my absolute favorite novels oh it's so good anyway won't go on about Wuthering heights for ages what else have i been reading and um, i've also been reading these two books i've been reading shirley which is our group read um which i'm really really enjoying so far um i'm not very far through well i say that i'm perfectly on track with the schedule um which is not very far through um i guess about a quarter of the way through probably a bit less right now um and i'm really really enjoying it so far um this is the second time i've read it but i read it several years ago and i don't remember it that well um so it's nice to rediscover it and remember why i liked it um and re-encounter all the characters so that's fun um, and then I've also been reading this. This is my um, source book on the Great Exhibition. So this is full of like primary sources about the Great Exhibition. I'm about a third of the way through, finding it really interesting. I've read some of Queen Victoria's diary talking about the opening day of the Great Exhibition. Um, I've read lots of newspaper articles. This is like a plan for the Great Exhibition and this is like all the different categories. So really, really fascinating, very nerdy and in detail and really, really loving this. And then I've also just started reading Michael Armstrong, The Factory Boy by Francis Trollope and um, I am sort of a quarter of the way through that and really enjoying it that's gonna be my main focus in the next few days um I feel like it might be a favorite of the month but we will see and then I'm also gonna pick up the half sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury which is a reread for me me and Marissa from blatantly bookish are gonna be buddy reading that starting next week I think um, and then I'm also going to start tomorrow little Dorrit by Charles Dickens another reread uh, which I'm buddy reading with Jenny from bookish Nalligans, which I am very very excited to listen to. And considering the speed I got through Wuthering Heights um, and how much I enjoy a good Victorian reread, I might be able to finish Little Dorrit by the end of the month, though it is like 40 hours. Um, so even on 1.25 speed, that's quite a lot of hours, but we will see. Anyway, that's what I've been reading in the last week or so. Let me know how your Victober is going so far. How has it been for you? What have you read? What have you enjoyed? How are you getting on? What are you gonna read next? And yeah, 
that's all for now. I hope this has been fairly quick and interesting and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Bye.